Hello, everybody. My name is Scatter. Welcome back to Divine Journey 2. I just wanted to capture this moment. I just went ahead and made up five more heart canisters, and because that is 11 total, what we should now see is a yellow heart container. That's the third layer of heart containers, 21 hearts total. Very big moment. Okay, now there's a lot on the docket for today, and I hope that I can get to it all. This is going to be a jam-packed episode, but the first thing I want to do is get one of these block placers set up. And I think this is going to be, this is just a generally very useful item. Uh, the thing I'm going to use it for is making plastic. So you may already know that plastic is made from putting wood in front of this thing. And of course it places the other way, and now I'm trapped in here. Excellent. So I can just pick that up and put it down the other way. So this will just place a block, whatever block it gives. Yeah, so what we want to do here, and uh, I need a little bit more fluids. All we want to do is get an export bus set up here. And I, I could make this an ore dictionary one and it could put out any kind of log, right? But for now, uh, let's just do oak. That's the one that I can... Um, you know, I, I automated it, I have a bunch. So as soon as this comes online, which it should very shortly, there we go. So that's gonna get wood and that's just gonna place it there forever. And then, I mean, I have this potion brew here that's kind of doing nothing for now, but that's fine. One of these is enough, as long as this is just automatically making um, plastic for us. Well, it's not making plastic, it's making the uh, little rubber pieces, but that's fine for now. Uh, some Something else that I wanted to test out was that I heard there was a way to repair mending items with just liquid experience uh, with the ender IO fluid tanks. So I have this here and it's going to fill up with liquid XP and I went ahead and threw mending on this thermal conductor rod. So I, can you just right click and put it in there? Oh, oh, that's so cool. That's awesome. Wow. Okay. So I guess that can be automated, but um, yeah, that's just uh, very, very, very cool. Um, that's good. Unfortunately, if you pull XP out of this, it doesn't mend, uh, like, armor you're wearing and stuff. But, yeah, that's a really cool, uh, situation there. I had no idea it worked that way. Okay, now something else I'm gonna do, uh, because I'm seeing it, uh, be necessary, is to set up another biodiesel setup. So, down by the power plant, that's the biodiesel that I'm using for power, and that's fine. I want another setup making biodiesel entirely separate from that that I can use for crafting. Because if you recall, the steel casing, which is the the kind of base for all the you know machine blocks and you know machine frames, all all the whole the whole line. These this needs energized osmium, and that means uh, biodiesel, right? So this is something that I'm going to have to automate. And I don't want like I could very easily just like pipe it from down here. I don't want to do that because then if I need, you know, if I'm using a lot of power and then I don't have biodiesel, then, you know, the whole thing shuts down. I want it to be separate. So I made another farming station and this one can be slow and small. I don't care because I'm not going to ultimately need this much of it, I don't think. Um, and I can have a pretty big backlog, uh, but I do need to make another hoe. No, seeds is just straight up wrong, but... Uh, that's fine. Oh, I'll make another hoe and then this can get farming and then I'll do a similar drawer setup to down there. Um, I may still need to put void upgrades on there so this doesn't get clogged up with one or the other considering it needs more seeds. So, I mean, this is just going to be draining power always. I'm not too concerned about that though. And then I'll have another setup right around here making biodiesel and then we can pipe that over to where uh, we're going to use it. Okay, so here's the setup. Uh, I've got my four drawers with my four things, and I will throw one of those on there. I'll keep an eye on this to see if I do end up having to void it uh, in order to have it keep up with the seeds. I have a feeling I will, but I'm not 100% sure yet. Um, but this will all back up. So right now this is making diesel. It's putting it into a tank. Not as big as the buffer I have at the power plant, but that's fine. Um, It'll just go into a tank. So this is making biodiesel. This is our crafting diesel, right? So this is going to make energetic uh, osmium and certus, right? Well, actually, I don't know if I need to auto craft the service, but uh, certus rather. But I, I'll still use this for crafting. Um, 
when when necessary so let me talk about let me talk you through my idea here so you'll see this separate set of drawers i was thinking about this last night and i had kind of a brain blast frankly uh, about what to do about this auto crafting business because like i was doing this stuff with the with the level emitters and i was thinking you know like i could do that i could do that for everything but like first of all that's a lot of channels and like it, it, is it possible like with the p2p channels and stuff like yeah uh is it reasonable i don't know like it's not that bad but like really it seems like a lot of screwing around when like ultimately we're not too too far away from real ae2 auto crafting anyway like it's it's so close and yet so far right i don't want to um make a complete mess of the whole system uh just for the sake of a few chapters worth of time right but then also uh there's a few things that the level emitters just like can't really do i think like all it is is a redstone signal based on what's in your system and like th th there's limitations to that obviously right so what i thought i could do was i have these drawers right now, these drawers are going to be, I don't know what to call them. Call them a buffer. Call them, like, just ingredients. I, I don't know. Call it anything. But basically, all of these drawers have a storage downgrade. So everything here stores a single stack of the item. Okay? So that's why they're they're two by two drawers. I, they don't need to store a lot. Just one stack. And basically, everything that I'm going to want to auto craft, all of its ingredients and everything, can go straight into here. Okay, I put a storage bus on the back of the controller. This is going to be extract only. I don't want the system to put anything in here. The only things that should be putting things in here are the autocraft systems I'll have set up. And then I also set the priority super low. So if, uh, you know, if I need to use items from in here, if I have any of the same items in like reserve in the actual, you know, storage system, it'll use those first. But it'll, it'll still use these if they're the only ones, which ideally they will be. So for example, right? Uh, I can, the, the very first thing I can do, I think it's pretty simple is to auto craft your steel casings. Okay. Which means I need to auto craft steel plates and steel rods, which I'm already, I am already doing, uh, with this system over here. So the steel plates and the steel rods, they won't be part of these drawers. I'll just worry about them here. And then the energetic osmium though will be okay. Which leads me to. Uh, I need a way to autocraft those. So I have the I have the fluid, right? But then how do you autocraft? Like you can do it with a fluid transposer, I believe. I think I would rather do it with a fluid crafter, which is a thing from Industrial Foregoing. I need a few more buckets. <laughs> I still need more buckets. I thought I made I made a bunch of iron plates. I don't know what happened to them just make a few more i mean this is the downside to doing this this way is that i need a separate metal press for every kind of plate that i want to automate right but um well first of all uh for plates specifically it won't be a metal press like it'll be a compactor um but i'll worry about that a little bit later when i'm actually automating some of these frames because right now it's a little annoying um but yeah like the issue there, there's no issue right with making a separate machine for every autocraft you want to do if you're automating the ingredients of those machines so this is, uh, this is going to be a pretty big step in that direction. So, well, I have one fluid crafter, so I guess let's just see how it works first of all. So you can give it a fluid, and then I think I could just put a bucket in here, and then it'll say just like automatically fill up that bucket from whatever fluid it has, and then I can lock the inventory so it only ever crafts uh, one thing. I think it'll work the way I want it to. And I guess one is fine for now since I don't want to automate the, uh, um, the Certus, just the Osmium right now. So that's fine. So let me get this piped over. This mob farm is in a pretty inconvenient location, but I can't really move it. <laughs> um, but let's just say the auto crafting is going to be done like down here. Okay. And then I will, um, get some power running down here. And I got power going down here now. And I've also been piping the biodiesel down here. Now, the fun part about that is that with a pipe this long, uh, that, that actually acts as a buffer, uh, as, as a tank of some sort uh, for the biodiesel. Now, it's not filling back up, even though the pipes are ostensibly full. Maybe the pipes aren't full, and that's just a visual thing. That would make a lot of sense. I mean, it is still making 
uh, biodiesel and it is going somewhere so i guess the pipes just aren't full but that it acts as a tank uh which is really good i think because uh the more the more muffin the uh the better in my opinion bit of a tongue twister anyway um right so we're just about ready here to test out this fluid crafter for the first time i think uh doing it over here is gonna be good then we can pipe it out to go somewhere doesn't really matter too much um i don't think we need to save the osmium because the energetic osmium unless i'm wrong let me actually just see what else that's used for so it's used for the steel casing it's used for basic universal cable i mean i guess yeah you know what no i, I might as well auto craft it and save it um and then it can get pulled out see every time i do that it's going to use an extra channel but i shouldn't concern myself with the channels right now um, but okay, sure. Fluid crafter. So that's filling up with biodiesel. And now you put a bucket there and you put these here. And then if I lock this in, okay, maybe it just has to be a bucket of this stuff. Lock that in. And now it's making those and see every time it crafts, it uses up a thousand biodiesel and it gets these on the output. So now just to test this out, I will replace this with... 82 stuff very shortly but mm, i mean that kind of sucks but it's just going to use like some extra um why would it do it that way okay i, I guess there's no way around that but um that's not such a big deal uh because there's just going to be a little buffer of osmium in here which is fine i have like tens of thousands of it right now um, which means I'm not going to see the results of the test right now, but that that's fine. So I just need to get this piped into this drawer. And so let me make a slot for them. There, good. And then as soon as we pipe it into there, they'll get there. And remember, only a stack can go in here at a time, so I'm not going to get a crazy buffer of all this stuff. Just about as many as I need. If I need more than one stack, I can just use more than one slot in the drawer. It's not that complicated. It's actually pretty simple so now that i have that steel rods and steel plates i'm already making with these right which means all i need now is an auto crafter to actually craft the steel casings and then put them into here and for that you know like i alluded to before you know there are a bunch of different auto crafters um they're all built on the mechanism one though so i think i'm just going to build the mechanism one if it isn't good enough for our purposes i can upgrade it to one of the ones from the other mods, but uh, there's no reason not to make it because you do need to make it um, as an ingredient regardless. One thing that I have trouble with sometimes, and I, I've seen this with the Dank Null too, is that some items just seem to get stuck in in uh, the ME system, and I don't know why that is. If anybody has any idea what could help me get this out, that would be great. Um, but for now, I guess I'm just going to have to make a new one. Luckily, they're really cheap anyway. Um, but, uh, yeah, so now I'm trying to decide if the move is to just auto craft steel rods and plates over here. I mean, I should just probably throw them into this system, right? Actually, yeah, then I don't have to use the ME channels for it. I can just use an ME channel for steel and then output that to this. Actually, actually, that seems like an amazing idea. Okay. I think... I think I have a plan here. So I need to make another metal press and make it over here for the rods because the rods, there's no other way around that. Uh, the rods has to be made in the uh, metal press from IE. And then I can make a compactor though for the plates. So the compactor, thermal machine, those are pretty easy to make at this point. Haven't actually made one before. I believe there's a quest. So these are just a better way to make plates. Um, Oh, we get a gear working die, which is a better way to make gears. So the gear working die, this is actually pretty hard to uh, craft. I actually, you know what? No, it's not. <laughs> I thought it was when I looked at it before, but you do, you can get it earlier than that. Uh, but I mean, it's not, in my opinion, super, super useful because, you know, it just replaces the metal press, same as the compactor. They're not cheaper. Um, the quest calls it cheaper. I'm not sure why. Uh, it's just four ingots as as always, but. Um, it's useful at least then I don't have to make the metal press, but again, sadly, um, I do have to make the metal press for the steel rod unless I want to use double the steel, which is honestly a little bit tempting. 
but no, the metal press isn't too hard to work with. It's pretty slow, but it's not too hard to work with. To my great chagrin, one thing that I'm going to have to get into in order to make this system work is P2P tunnels from AE2. Now, this has never really been something that I've been uh, good at doing. Um, there is there is a quest for it. Thankfully, we can grab a little something here. Oh, we got a we got a memory card. Good. I'm glad I fucking made one. Okay. Um. Anyway, so basically, what the wait what? Memory card. Okay. Uh, b basically, these can compress and transmit channels. So each one of them can take 32 channels, compress them down into one channel, and then that can be carried along a line somewhere else. Now, you don't get it for free. You still have to connect it back up to the controller somehow, uh, but it's a good way to like transmit them. So I'm going to replace this little bit here with a smart cable so that I can see what's going on. Okay. So how many channels are you carrying right now to this is just going in this side of the controller? I think it should be uh, like four. Four makes sense. I realized that I said that after I saw the number. I actually kind of had no idea. So that'll be one, two there for the terminal and the input bus, three for the storage bus, four for the import bus here, plus six, seven, eight. Uh, no, sorry, four, five, six, seven, right? So that's going to be seven total. Now that, uh, works for now, uh, but I want it to be more. So what I can actually do is take these and move them up next to these ones that are just coming out of the side here, and that should be fine. Uh, but for now it's, for now it's fine the way it is, so I'm not going to touch it. Uh, but what I am definitely going to do is what I think is just going to work. Okay. I think, like I said, I'm not super 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 familiar on this but i think this is just gonna work so here's my plan okay i have the p2p tunnel going straight into the controller so that means 32 channels coming out of the controller that's going straight into the p2p tunnel those are gonna get compressed right and then put on this line here okay so that's fine so now this is carrying this is one channel that's fine. That's fine. It's just that channel. If I put, I'm going to put a smart cable up here so I can see what's going on. I think at this point, this should be eight channels. I think, I hope. Yes, eight channels. Okay. So now these are carrying the maximal eight channels. Um, I will need to move these because I need another channel for the output uh, P2P bus. Um, yeah. Okay. So let me do that. Okay, so that just saved us two channels on this line that's running all the way over there, right? Okay, so then if you look at what's coming in here, that's six channels, which is enough. So that'll be one channel for the P2P output and another channel for the storage bus for the drawer controller that I need. And actually, well, I could just have it output sooner, uh, but I shouldn't. there shouldn't be a need of that. I can reconfigure it, uh, and it'll be fine. Yeah, that'll be fine. So I'm going to need a little bit of dense cable here. I shouldn't need too much for right now. But, okay, so let's head over to the other side. And we can have this running all the way over, all the way over. So that's hooked up to the storage bus, and that's all good. And now here, we can have it output the channels, right? So if I put this here, uh-huh. So now, so where's the dense cable? There it is. So I want you to output. So basically this is, this is a tunnel, right? So this is going in here and it's coming out of that face that we just put into the controller, right? Is this making any sense so far? I hope so. And we just need to link them with the memory card. So shift right click here, memory card cleared. Shift right click, memory card cleared, just regular right click, invalid machine. One moment. Okay, apparently this just doesn't work when there's something in your offhand, which is really good to know. So shift right click, configuration copy to memory card, right? So frequency 53 dd. Now, I, I should have put this, I wanted to put this somewhere that I could see that the channels were actually working, but I don't think, I don't need to see that. I can be confident. 
I'm confident it's working. So this memory card stores the configuration of that. And it's, it's many to one, right? So basically I can have this here, right? Loaded device configuration, that's fine. Um, but if I also wanted to just have another memory card, so that gives us 32 channels from that face of the controller. So all 32 are coming out here now, right? If I wanted to make another P2P bus and have it like over there somewhere, uh, that works just fine. It would just take an extra channel for the P2P tunnel itself, um, I believe. So that's uh, really insanely cool. And I believe this should just work now. So I have to uh, just run some Fluix cable over here. I think I'm going to have a similar setup to what I have here where I just have a main dense cable bus running down. And then I can just branch off of it whenever I need. I think that makes a whole lot of sense. But uh, yeah, as long as this P2P system actually works the way it's supposed to, the way that I think it does now, um, I'm super happy with that. Okay, now this, I'm thinking, is it. I, I'm i very excited for what this infrastructure means for our capabilities going forward. Uh, but first of all, it's tested. I'm just now realizing that the Fluid Crafter, I don't believe actually needs power, which is kind of crazy, but I'll, I'll pull up all that at a later time. Anyway, uh, so we can go ahead, though, throw our export bus here. This is going to take Osmium, and that's it. Osmium, and then we can connect that all up there. Now, I could turn all this into smart cable. I have way, way, way too much of the resources that I need to do that. I have 100,000 redstone, and I have 10,000 wool. Uh, I guess the glowstone is the only thing that I don't have, like, a crazy insane amount of, but, um, you know, I, I don't really need it. If I do need to inspect the channels... I can, uh, I can do so, but this should go ahead and come online and use one of the P2P channels here. If not, I've done something horribly wrong. Um, yes, okay, I was really worried for a second. It was taking a while, but there goes the Osmium in. Now, hopefully when this fills up with eight stacks, uh, which is going to take a little bit, it's going to auto-craft, and in fact, as far as that goes, I'm just going to help it out a little bit. I've run uh, the, the ducts, the item ducts, all the way along here to the... Uh, drawer controller and to avoid some of the weird problems and because I'm probably going to be automating a lot of stuff I just gone ahead and made a bunch of uh, resonant servos here so as to not uh, have any speed issues and if I do I can uh, cross that bridge you know but let's just see let's just see this in work so there we go it's going to auto craft those for as, as much as it can until it can't put any more into the drawer controller the drawer controller of course is not going to accept any as soon as this fills up. And then we're just gonna have a stack of this uh, energetic osmium ready to go whenever we want. If, again, if we need more, I can just put another, uh, I can just put another stack of it in the drawers. It makes so much sense. It's such an easy system, such a straightforward system, such an expandable system, such a modular system. It's just, it's just incredible. I, I, I'm, I'm so excited for for what this means but let's go ahead and finish up making steel casings this one shouldn't be too hard at all it's uh let's do compactor we will auto output on the right input on top one more export bus and have that export steel and as a reminder we're always going to have 2048 steel as a result of um the uh, ME level emitter that I have over there. Where's the steel ingot? Why can't I see this right now? Um, there it is. Okay, and then we can just hook this up here. So two out of 32 channels down. And as soon as that comes on the line, which should just be a moment. There we go. So this is really slow, but we can always upgrade it. But it doesn't have to be fast because it's just going to be passive, right? It's going to make 64 plates. It's going to take 64 plates. It's going to back up. Well, right now, right now it's not taking the plates at all, but we have to tell the system to store these in the drawers. And there we go. So now, again, it's going to take a while, but it doesn't matter because it's just going to be a passive auto-crafting thing. So, and I mean, if it does end up being a problem in the future, I can upgrade the speed, I can upgrade the, the machine, upgrade the speed, and it's going to be fine. Don't even need a servo because of the uh, auto output, which is great. Last thing I need for this is another metal press. 
I forgot to mention this in a video, but in the process of uh, moving over my uh, engineering workbench, I, I lost all the blueprints. I have no idea how. Uh, they just kind of, they just disappeared. So that sucks. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to have to remake them all. Uh, but that's not that bad. You know. Uh, it's totally fine. The wire cutters I believe I have in my backpack. I'll just leave them here because I never use them for anything else. And we need one more rod mold. Okay. Now, in the process of moving over, uh, or not moving over, but creating a um, metal press here, I, uh, I realized that it would be a much better idea to uh, use item conduits because the item conduits uh, can actually just the interact directly with these but i mean they're also just better in pretty much every way like you don't need servos they're not going to get clogged up they just instantly transmit items so and they're, they're like pretty cheap at this point pulsating iron is just um ironing getting ender pearl it's really not that expensive you know so it's completely uh it's completely fine now as well uh what i realized is this is not quite the setup that i'm going to want here right so where's my pick there it is so rather than using two channels, because I'm making two things out of steel here, right? So I'm actually just going to have a drawer back here. This is going to have steel in it. So then you steel ingot. And then you connect up there. Now this is also going to have storage downgrade ideally i would like to have this just be like one item but i i don't think there's a way to do that if there is then can i put two of these in no <laughs> okay um but that that's going to be fine though and then you just auto input from the back and you don't have to input on the top anymore so now this should keep getting it steel from there right and this doesn't need to be locked or anything that's the only thing that's ever gonna um go into it um, I have to rearrange this a little bit. There we go. So I just moved over the metal press so that it has some, uh, some room to pull out of here. Boom. Boom. And then you're going to want to extract and you're going to want to insert. So then this should just work now, right? So that's good. Now I'm, I'm pretty sure this is, this is the main reason I switched to conduits. I'm pretty sure this will just work and I'm, I'm becoming disenchanted. Um, so that kind of sucks. I think switching to conduits was still the move. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm, hmm. Is there really no way without having like an inventory block on here to just extract? There has to be a way. I was unable to find a way. So I think my only option here is going to be a single stack drawer. Now, does this mean that I'm always going to have an extra stack of rods here? Yes. Do I care? No, because it's one stack compared to, you know, thousands of steel that I have. I, I have thousands of fucking rods right now. It doesn't even matter. So it's fine. It's totally fine. One stack is nothing. It's fine. If anything, it's just a bigger buffer and then it can kind of go in there. But I do need to put steel rods right there. There we go. Okay. Okay. Now, the final piece of the puzzle is actually making the steel casings, right? Now, there's two options that I have here and there's pros and cons to each. Number one is to take the output of these three machines... So energized osmium, steel plates, steel rods, take all those outputs and put them directly into the formulaic assembler, skipping the ME system entirely. Pro, it doesn't use channels. Uh, con, it won't use the, the currently stored items that I have. I think what I'm going to go with... Um, and, and you know what, I need to, I need to set this up before I, I make a decision here because, uh, there are a few things I can think of that might complicate it. Okay. So here's the formulaic assembler. I will throw the formula in, and this is going to be making steel casings. Now, as a reminder, I may end up replacing this with any of the other, 
item crafters from the other mods. I, I don't know, but uh, is there any way to just load that in, or am I going to have to get the actual items in order to do that? Looks like I'm going to have to get the items. That's fine. Okay. So that's going to be in there. Encode the formula. Stock control. Fill empty grid. Craft a single item. Auto mode on. Okay. So that's 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 fine there. Now you extract always on. And I just need to throw this into the drawers. So that's fine. So now the actual last step here is simply to auto input my items into here. Now my issue is this is a big thing here. Let me look up what this stock control thing does, and that might be what I want. Okay, I found I found the GitHub issue that spawned this option, and it's from 2016, and it says, when automating multi-ingredient recipes, it's very easy to clog the formulaic assembler. If I have two ingredients and one of them is scarce and the other abundant, the abundant one will soon fill all the stock slots, preventing the scarce ingredient to enter and making the production come to a halt. It would be awesome if there were maybe just nine stock slots, each of them tied to one slot in the crafting grid, limiting stock to that specific item. So that kind of sounds like what I want. The only issue is we're going to load this up with four stacks of plates and four stacks of rods. But again, that's completely fine. Uh, the only issue, I mean, there's also six output slots. So it's going to be, we're going to have a pretty big buffer of these realistically, not just in the drawers, but that's okay. That's completely okay. We want to output on the right. We're going to end up inputting on the top here and auto eject. So the last thing I need is to get the items in, right? And so it's just three different items and I can do that with an export bus. Now that I know about this stock control situation, I think it's going to work just fine. Okay, with that, I think we finally have everything we need. So the device is online and there it goes, inserting everything it needs. Now, so this is going down here. I think this is going to be allocated to one of these crafting slots. So this may fill up with four. We'll have to see how this plays out. I don't think it's going to fill up the entire row. It'll just be four stacks of rods and four stacks of plates. I'm totally okay with that, right? But as soon as this picks up a little bit, so we know, so we're automating the osmium. We're automating all three of these ingredients. They're going into this drawer system. It's going to make a stack at a time. And then that is hooked up with a storage bus to the ME system, which is going to end up going straight back out through here, right? Yeah, so this is it. Stock control is on. And if this ends up filling up a fifth slot, I'm going to be pretty upset. Moment of truth. Ah, oh, what the hell? Really? How? Why? Stock control on. You shouldn't be able to do that. I auto mode on. Stock control on. If I take all this out, I feel like that shouldn't be allowed. Where did all of those rods even go? I shift clicked in like four stacks. <laughs> I'm so worried now. Auto mode. Does that mean it's off now or am I turning it off? Auto mode on. Auto mode on. Stock control is on. Oh, why won't this just work, man? And why is it only putting in the... Is it just going to put in rods until it can't put in any more... No, they're still in my damn inventory. What the hell? Okay, so that seemed like it did... What the hell is going on here? I hate this. Okay. So auto mode on, stock control on. Are you now going to stop filling up at four stacks? No, you're not. Okay. Turn. Get, get rid of this. Get rid of this. I need to figure out what's going on here. I mean, I feel like in theory, we have what we want here, but in, in practice, it's it's going a little, a little bit different. What if we just kept it simple for a second here? What if we got just this, and that went straight into there, and now it's going to back up there, but it's just going to keep filling it up. I don't understand. Isn't that the point of the stock control? Oh, this is going horribly. So not only was I not able to solve this problem, uh, although I think I found a solution, not a great one, I uh, uh, realized that metal presses, if the inventory on the output is full, 
it won't stop. It'll just spit the items into the world. So what I actually have to do here is, I guess, use a comparator here and make this stop. I don't, I don't know why this has to be so difficult, man. All right, so a couple things. First of all, I realize this does work as intended, but the issue is that uh, every slot in the formulaic assemblicator corresponds to two slots in here, which means the steel rod is actually going to fill up eight of these slots, and after that, it'll start filling the other stuff. Is it a little inconvenient to have eight stacks of steel rods left over? Maybe yes, maybe no. I, I don't think it's that much in the grand scheme of things. As as long as it's it's see because the the issue is it's a single number, right? It's it's a constant. It's always going to be no matter how much I need, it's always just going to be eight stacks sitting here, right? So it doesn't scale. That's what's important. Secondly, I'm going to have to use a redstone comparator here in order to uh, get this thing done. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'm not a hundred percent sure how this goes and i forgot to grab some actual redstone but i know that i can do what i want to do here with a comparator and a potentiometer so a potentiometer just lets me set up whatever uh, level of redstone output i want comparator hopefully this one first of all let me confirm that this works uh the way i expect it to so if i just make one of these is this going to output a signal um no, but did that just get sucked out immediately? I think it may have. So maybe... Let me not. Let me just try, like, putting an entire stack in. No compare, really? That doesn't do that? Really, really, really. Wow. Um, that kind of sucks, doesn't it? Okay, it does. It does work, but it needs a redstone update or upgrade, rather, to do so. So I, I don't know if it needs the comparator because it does just say emits signal. So if it doesn't, that would be great. It doesn't. Okay. So that's good. So if there's any steel in here at all, I, I'm gonna want to turn it off. So this this isn't actually even gonna be a buffer of any sort. I just want to make, if there's any steel rods in here at all, turn this thing off, right? So output of one. Uh, oh, which means I don't even need to do anything fancy. I can just have this go straight into a, re a repeater, right? Actually, I could probably just have the repeater coming straight out of here. Okay, this is really simple. <laughs> I'm over here thinking I'm going to have to do all kinds of crazy crap with redstone in order to get this to work. But no, nope, this is just going to be completely easy and then you active without signal right so if there's anything in there it's not going to put steel out but then if it gets sucked out of course and it becomes empty then do it again if not then you do that now is this filled up yet yes this is exactly right this is exactly what i expected to happen okay so that's that's seven steel rods and then one and then there's four and now it's it's going to back up to six stacks of steel casings in there which is totally fine i'm absolutely okay with that but this ugly little mess of a setup here is fully automated from steel ingots well the steel ingots i guess they're kind of automated over there but assuming we have steel ingots and osmium and i mean biodiesel is is fully automated over there as well but starting from all that this is fully automated steel casings. Uh, all the, the only other thing I have to do is, uh, you know, all of this stuff, which is going to be kind of rough, but I feel very accomplished. This is this is a pretty huge deal. Um, this is this is a good step in in automation. This is going to come in very handy. I think as soon as I'm automating, like. Some of the other like really, really crazy stuff, like the the thermal machine frames, if I can automate those, then I'll feel really accomplished. Like this is a really simple setup, but it works. It works. And I consider that a win. So for now, if you made it this far, thank you very much for watching. And I hope to see you on the next one. Bye.